Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to day three of official Battlebound previews. We have a lot of great cards to look at today. I want to get started relatively quick, but just real fast before we begin, if you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to help support what we do here at the channel, one of which is our Patreon page, that's below. Also, you'll find links to products on Amazon. If you make any purchases on Amazon, no matter what it is, once you go through that first link, we'll get a small percentage for the channel. Finally, Flipside Gaming is still offering a promo code for our viewers. They have some exclusive Richard Kane Ferguson playmats. If you're a fan of old school magic art, you might want to check those out. And as always, thank you to all the folks that watch the channel, not just the ones that look at those links. I appreciate each and every one of you. With that being said, let's get into it. We'll begin with this basic land cycle. This was floating around. I just wanted to show it to you in case you were interested in the art. But we'll move on now to the other cards. Okay, it looks like stores are getting their cards. Here is Zindersplit, Eye of Wisdom, and Okan, Eye of Chaos. Let's look at the Eye of Wisdom first. Blue and four, legendary creature, homunculus. This is a rare, as they both are. One four, partners with the Eye of Chaos. At the beginning of combat on your turn, flip a coin until you lose a flip. Whenever a player wins a coin flip, draw a card. Okun, Eye of Chaos. Red and four, legendary creature, Cyclops Berserker. Three, three, partners with the Eye of Wisdom. At the beginning of combat and your turn, flip a coin until you lose a flip. Whenever a player wins a coin flip, double Okun's power and toughness until end of turn. It's a three, three. Okay, there's a lot going on here. The Eye of Chaos, three, three with no evasion that could pump. That's not super exciting to me. It's fine. Maybe I can give it evasion or something. But so many times I feel like this is just going to be like a 12-12 block by 1-1, one, one, and eventually my opponent will have an answer for it before it's too late. Now, the Eye of Wisdom, on the other hand, is more appealing to me. I like to draw cards, as many Magic players like to do. I feel like I could pull ahead on resources with a card like this, and I would be happy to run both, because there is synergy, obviously, with these coin flips as well, since they are both looking for results from coin flips. So if I have one in my deck, my partner has one in their deck, then we're both flipping coins, we're both gaining advantages when we win coin flips, and that's actually kind of cool, because notice it says whenever a player wins a coin flip, you get to do something. So it doesn't even have to be you personally. Now, beyond that, that also means that there's other cards that let you flip coins, these could get even better. Now, we haven't seen that yet, maybe that's in the set, maybe it's not, but you know where you can find that, Commander. So before we get there, real quick, limited, yeah, I think these are first pickable. I think these could be very powerful cards that your opponent's going to have to deal with. At least they're going to have to deal with Eye of Wisdom, I think. They might be able to get by for a little while not doing anything about the Eye of Chaos, but the Eye of Wisdom needs to be dealt with quickly. In the world of Commander, there's crazy combos. Chance Encounter comes to mind, Crux Thumb. There's a lot of things you could do, and these can be joint commanders. They are legendary creatures. So you could make some kind of is it coin flip deck if you really wanted to, and that could be a lot of fun, perhaps. I do think there's going to be a lot of commander players looking to pick these up. I'll just close by saying I realize this is high variance. I know coin flips could completely backfire and blow up in your face, but I do think if you're flipping coins in large amounts like these cards can enable you to do, along with some other cards, eventually you got to come out ahead. Corvath Brightflame and Sylvia Brightspear. These are revealed today on Twitter by Patrick Sullivan and Cedric Phillips. And I won't go into all the rules we partner with since we did that on Monday, but we will talk about the cards beginning with Corbath Bright Flame. Red and 5, Legendary Creature Dragon. These are both rare. 3 4, Partners with Sylvia. Flying Haste, Knights, your team controls, have Flying and Haste. Sylvia Bright Spear. White and 2, Legendary Creature Human Knight. 2 2, Partners with Corvath. Double Strike, Dragons, your team controls, have Double Strike. Okay, let's talk about Limited first. If your team's lucky enough to get these in a draft or in sealed, then you're probably in for a pretty good time. You could look at Corvath and say, wow, that feels a little expensive at six, but remember, that includes the tutor cost of getting Sylvia, whether that's in your library or in your partner's library. So either way, you just have to take that into account. Now, once they're both on the battlefield, your opponents have to find an answer, because if they don't, they're probably in trouble. They might be able to chump block once or twice, but eventually you're going to start running away with the game. A 3-4 Flying Haste Double Strike Dragon and a 2-2 Flying Haste Double Strike Knight is a lot to deal with, definitely. So your opponents are going to need removal or they're going to need to be able to finish you off quickly. Now, outside of the limited game, what about Commander? 
Well, we all wanted more Night Tribal, so this kind of fits in, but you would have to go Mardu most likely, which might be a little bit awkward for some of the builds that already exist, but not impossible. There's definitely ways to do that. And also, on the other hand, Dragon decks could run Sylvia. They're a little more apt to have like five color builds and such, so that's not as much of a stretch. But either way, these could either be your commander together if you wanted them to be, or just simply part of those tribal decks. I think they could be pretty good there under the right circumstances. Chakram Slinger, Chakram Retriever. These were previewed by Brian Kibler and his dog, who has an Instagram account. These are all things I didn't think I'd be saying in a video when I woke up this morning, but here we are. So first off, this Slinger costs a red and four. Human Warrior Uncommon. Partners with the Retriever. Pay a red, tap, and this will deal two damage to target player or planeswalker. It's a 2-4. The Retriever. Blue and four. Elemental Hound. These are both uncommons, of course. 2-4. Partners with the Slinger. Whenever you cast a spell during your turn, untap that creature. First, I want to point out that the Slinger is a warrior, which we know from the cards that were previewed this week that that could be very relevant. Aside from that, though, obviously these are going to work well in tandem, as all these partners do in Limited, but they are not legendary. So you can't use them as co-commanders in your commander deck. Now, what they're doing isn't super powerful necessarily in the commander format, so I don't really see a lot of people trying to play them there generally. But in Limited, these could be very good, of course. What I like about it is you pay the one red, do two damage to another player, and then play your spell for the turn, untap this, keep it back as a blocker, and hopefully you have one more red so that at the end of your opponent's turns, you can just go ahead and ding them again for two. And because of the wording, you can run these in separate two-headed giant decks and still get that effect. That starts to add up. I mean, four damage every turn cycle, that does start to feel significant if your opponent doesn't have an answer for this or they can't finish you off quicker, then they could be in trouble. So. I do think for limited purposes, this is a fine combination to play. The five casting costs for each might feel a tad bit expensive, but again, remember what I said previously, you're actually using these to tutor each other. That makes the cost feel a lot better, too. Overall, yeah, these could be a real high draft pick at Uncommon, as a matter of fact. I do think they will be good for you and your partner in the limited game, even if I don't see a whole lot of use for them elsewhere. Okay, we got some more partners here. We have Lay Weaver and Lore Weaver. Lay Weaver costs a green of three, Human Druid Uncommon 2-2, two, two, partners with Lore Weaver. Tap, untap two target lands. Lore Weaver, blue and three, Human Wizard Uncommon 2-2, two, two, partners with Lay Weaver, two blue and five, target player draws two cards. So obviously they do work together, kind of sort of, because the Lay Weaver can untap two target lands, which makes drawing cards a little easier with the Lore Weaver. So there is synergy, maybe not as strong as some of the other partners we've seen, now, when it comes to raw power, I think these are very good in limited. I don't know if I'm playing them in commander because you can do similar things in more efficient ways there. It's a very powerful format. But for limited purposes, I could see myself picking these up in a draft. You'll open a booster pack, see these, and most of the time, I would say they probably could be first pickable. There might be some removal spells or some other things that might catch your eye. But for the most part, I do think they'll be relatively strong. And in sealed, again, you'll be happy when you see them. Now, like I said, they do interact with each other, but even if you lost one of them, the other ability is still not bad, just generally. I like the green ability because you can untap two target lands good in the middle to late portion of the game, where you might be able to cheat some stuff out early at a curve. It works, obviously, on your lands or your partner's lands or your opponent's lands, but I don't know why you would do that. Then, of course, the other one is good in the late game, where maybe you can draw some cards and push your way past a board stall or something along those lines. Overall, good power level for limited, even if maybe they're not as crazy as some of the other partners we've seen. These also are not legendary, so like some of the others, they cannot be used as co-commanders. Jubilant Mascot. A white and two, Immoculus, 1-1, one, one, and this is an uncommon. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay a white and three. If you do, support two. I don't know what's going on in that art. That's amazing. So anyway, the card itself is actually really good in limited. Because as long as between you and your partner, you have a couple of creatures out on the battlefield at any given time, this is going to be a fantastic mana sink. And it puts your opponents in a tough position. They either have to burn a removal spell on this 1-1, or they could find themselves falling back pretty quick as your creatures start getting bigger and bigger as time goes on. Maybe one of the best mana sinks I've seen in the set so far. And I would pick this up in a higher portion of a pack and draft. Sky Streamer, this is a white and four Griffin common 3-2. It has assist, it has flying. When it enters the battlefield, target player gains four life. So sometimes you need a flyer. I mean, the assist is sort of nice. You can get it out a little bit early. 
The gaining for life, I mean, it can be you, it can be your partner, it can be anyone you want, as a matter of fact, but I don't really think that's super relevant, especially considering you can't sideboard. If you happen to go up against some aggressive builds on the other side of the table, then you're going to be happy to have the life gain, but you're not going to have a situation where you can side it in like you normally would in 1v1 limited games. So it loses a little something there, but like I said, flyers are a commodity, so you'll run this probably a lot of the time. Together forever and never depart. I think we just got Rickrolled. How about that? Two white enchantment. This one is a rare whenever this enters the battlefield. Support two. Pay one. Choose target creature with a counter on it. When that creature dies this turn, return that card to its owner's hand. Okay, so here's another support card. Obviously, that's been a big theme in this set, and there's a lot of cards that interact well with that. We've been seeing all week. So that's good. This only costs two. It is two on color, but it's still only two. And I feel like supporting two for two, that alone is pretty decent. On top of that, being able to kind of protect your stuff and your teammate's stuff is actually kind of sweet. When something is going to die, it ends up going back to your hands. So, okay, that's not the same as maybe just going back to the battlefield or something like that. But I'm still okay with that. I'm not losing that resource. I just have to recast it. This is a pretty good card. Not only in limited, but I would play this in commander, plus one, plus one counters, decks, and such as well. Out of Bounds. Blue and three, it's an instant uncommon assist counter target spell. Very simple. When it comes to limited play, this will be great for you and your partner, especially if you're trying to control the board state a little bit. In some ways, this feels like original counter spell. You can just hold back two mana a piece between you and your partner, and then just play whatever you need to play, and you still have that counter magic up for something your opponents are going to play. I think that's kind of awesome. When it comes to commander, this is actually a very interesting commander card, because yeah, sure, it's a forecasting cost hard counter spell, but if you did need someone to go in with you on this or wanted someone to go in, they probably would a lot of the time because of a threat someone else is playing at the table. So I actually find this kind of interesting there too. Spellseeker. Maybe one of the more powerful new cards we've seen so far. This is a blue and two human wizard 1-1. One, one. This one's a rare. When this enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an instant or sorcery card with convert a mana cost two or less, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. This is very, very good, as long as you have targets for it, obviously. If you have targets in your deck, of course, run this. It will probably be very good for you. It's a very efficient tutor. Commander, there's a lot of low casting cost instant and sorcery spells that are very powerful. This will give you the opportunity to pick and choose what you need when you need it. And also, maybe, just maybe, I could see this perhaps seeing some legacy or vintage play. Again, those are formats that do have a lot of really good cheap spells. Gang up. This is a black and X instant spell. Uncommon assist destroy target creature with power X or less. It feels like they're kind of checking all the boxes with these assist spells. We just saw the blue counter spell. Here's the black removal spell. But ultimately in limited, probably very first pickable in a draft. This will be fantastic for you and your partner. Sometimes you might just be able to play this on your own. But if your partner wants to go in with you, you can take out something bigger. Or else between the two of you, just hold back your mana. This is an instant kind of like the counter spell we just saw. That way I hold back a little mana, my partner holds back a little mana. Together we can still cast maybe a couple spells that turn and have this up for any threat we want to deal with on our opponent's turns. So I like the versatility, I like the power behind the card, I like the speed of it. Even in Commander, I'd consider playing this. I might use it as a removal spell myself a lot of the time, but if someone ramps out something large early and we need to deal with it, I could probably recruit someone else at the table to help me take that creature out. So I feel like it could be a good card there too. Inner Demon, 2 black and 2, Enchantment Aura, Uncommon, Enchant Creature, Enchanted Creature gets plus 2, plus 2, has flying, and is a demon, in addition to its other types. When Inner Demon enters the battlefield, all non-demon creatures get minus 2, minus 2 till end of turn. Sometimes I'm hard on auras, but I like this one because it has the other ability attached to it as well, and it lessens the chance that this could blow up in your face when you try to play it. Now, the big question is, do I run this in my deck if I'm running a lot of small creatures? And that could be problematic, because remember... You don't get a second chance. There's no sideboarding. So you have to be all in on the deck you're putting out there on the battlefield. If you and your partner have a lot of 1-1s and 2-2s in your deck, you might want to consider not running this because many times it might be something that's just stuck in your hand. It's not doing enough for you. It is a nice panic button, though. Things go awry. But at the same time, I don't know if I can take that risk because my opponents might be playing larger creatures. And normally I would just side this out, but you don't have that opportunity with these multiplayer games. So I think as long as you feel like you're maybe running larger creatures, a little heavier curve, this will be just fine for you and very runnable there. Now in Commander, 
Just run a Demon Tribal deck, then you don't have to worry about it. Cheering Fanatic. This is a red and one goblin uncommon 2-2, and whenever this attacks, choose a card named Spells with a chosen name. Cost one less to cast this turn. Now, I have to point out in the art that the goblin is cosplaying as Sylvia Brightspear, who we just saw a few moments ago. So there's that. Other than that, this is a 2-2 for 2 with upside. You know how I feel about those. Always happy to play them in limited. And this is going to be really good for you, I think, because this is strong upside. The thing is, this helps you cheat the curve a little bit. Now, most of the time, your opponents are going to be more than happy to trade to get this off the battlefield. This probably won't stick around long. But even if this just lets you cheat a little bit ahead of curve just one time, I think it's worth your trouble here. And the way the wording is, it also will help your partner as well in two-headed giant, which is kind of nice because once you name the spell, it's any spell, not just your spells, which is fantastic. Now, Commander, when I play this, it is a goblin. I'll give it that. I don't know if that'll be super relevant in the limited game from what we've seen so far, but it might be relevant in Commander, so I will give it that. The other thing that jumps to mind is would I want to play this in a Legacy Goblin deck? I don't know if that deck needs this. I feel like it's pretty streamlined without it. I'd at least want to test it, though. You never know. Lava Field Overlord. Two red and seven. Assist, flying, five, four. When this enters battlefield, it deals four damage to target creature and opponent controls. This is a strong card, actually, in limited two-headed giant, because you get a five, four flyer and do four damage to target creature and opponent controls. And look at it this way. I mean, yes, it costs nine converted mana costs, but maybe that's five for you, four for your partner, or something like that. I think that's worth a 5-4 flyer and a removal spell, as a matter of fact. Yeah, that could be kind of awesome. Now, aside from that, if nobody's assisting you, maybe in Commander, well, the card's not as exciting. But you might be able to convince someone to help you out, considering it does do 4 damage to another creature. So if there's a creature that is small enough that this can deal with it, and you and someone else want to get rid of it, well, it does open up that option, potentially. Other than that, though, it's not a very exciting Commander card because, again, it is 9 casting costs. You could be doing some crazy things in Commander for 9 mana, and I don't really think this is probably going to make my cut, honestly. It does go well with Sylvia, which we saw earlier, though. Stadium Vendors. This is a red and 3 goblin common 3-3. Three, three. When this enters the battlefield, choose a player. That player adds 2 mana of any one color they choose. This could be good in 2-headed giant limited because, first off, at its core, this is basically a 3-3 three, three for 2. You could look at it that way. You're able to get two mana back. Also, it fixes the color. Granted, you already paid four mana for this, so two back. Maybe you'll have another play. Maybe you won't. But what's nice is two-headed giant. I could give that mana to my partner, and then it's basically a ramp spell. I'm playing a 3-3 three, three creature for four, and they have two extra mana now to cast something larger, hopefully ahead of curve. That's actually kind of sweet. This is that common. You'll see a number of these floating around in a draft. Or you'll hopefully get maybe one or two in seal pools at times. As far as Commander, it is a goblin, but probably not really exciting there for the most part. Bramble Sovereign. This one's mythic. Two green and two, it's a dryad for four. And whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield, you may pay a green and one. If you do, that creature's controller creates a token that's a copy of that creature. Wow, actually, that's pretty good for four mana. Good stats, right? Four, 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 four. And that ability to boot? Yeah, sign me up. I'm happy to play this in Limited. It's Mythic. You won't see it all the time, but when you do, it's very playable. You can enhance your board state, enhance your partner's board state. Fantastic. And in Commander, yeah, I'd be happy to play this. Because, again, you could be playing some really big creatures, some really powerful creatures with great effects. This is just going to speed things along as long as you have the mana to activate it. I kind of wish this was Legendary. I would want to try this out as a Commander. Last one standing. Red, black, and one. Sorcery. Rare. Choose a creature at random, then destroy the rest. All right, I'm usually not a fan of high variance cards, but I'm fine with this one. First off, the casting cost is really cheap. It's two different colors, but it's only three for a board sweep. Yeah, sign me up. Secondly, yeah, there's a random element. Sure, I could blow up everything but one of my opponent's creatures. That won't feel great, but if this is the board sweep that's in my hand, I'm not going to hesitate to use it. It might be the difference between taking four damage next turn as opposed to taking 12 damage, right? So it's still going to protect you. It's still going to be good enough. And what I really like is that casting cost is very affordable, especially in a two-headed giant game, because let's say we're halfway or later into the game, I could still use this for three, then maybe even play a creature. My partner could play perhaps two creatures by that point. 
So even if one of our opponent's creatures survive, we could still pull ahead on board state if we plan everything out correctly. This is a great panic button card. It's also one of those cards that if your opponent's overcommits, you might be able to kind of get them. So yeah, you're going to play this as long as you can swing those colors. You'll be really happy with it. Now in Commander, it could be good there too. Play it with a bunch of indestructible creatures or an indestructible commander. And yeah, it might be a decent utility card. All right, let's move on to some reprints with Core Spirit Dancer. This is a fantastic rare. I'm glad to see this card. It needed another reprint. It's been reprinted a few times, but it's still a $7 to $10 card. So I was happy to see it here. And maybe it's an indication that we're going to see some more Aura spells over the next few days as more cards are revealed. All right, this one came to us from a Japanese language preview, but it was a reprint of Narcana Revenants. You'll see the version from Rise of the Eldrazi on your left side for the translation. This is another card that got really expensive thanks to the popularity of Vampires and Commander recently. This is up to around $20, $25. It's never been reprinted. Happy to see it. It is a mythic, but still happy to see it getting a reprint. Greater Good. This has really taken off recently financially. The other versions of this card have been really hot in the Commander market. This is at Rare. This will stabilize those prices a little bit. These cards will definitely run you, just for the regular versions, $15 to $20. Don't even get me started on foils. The Judge promo, which is where they pulled this art from, is about $70. The 9th edition foil is going to run you closer to $50, but still, very, very good reprint yet again. Magus of the Candelabra. Not an expensive card. The Time Spiral versions are only a couple dollars. However, it's a really smart reprint for the limited game here because you can actually gift your mana to your partner with a card like this. So it takes assist to a whole new level, as a matter of fact. Really good inclusion just for that purpose alone. Seedborn Muse, another great, much needed reprint at Rare. These things will run you $25 to $30 if you try to pick them up. Another fantastic commander inclusion here. Sky Shroud Claim, this is from Nemesis that has never been reprinted and it is a commander staple. That common from Nemesis will run you 2 to $3, so not cheap. Foils will run about 40 So this is another very welcome inclusion in the set for commander players. Now, sure, there are cards that do similar things or even more economical, but in commander, it's good to have redundancies. All right, with that being said, those are the cards for today, and a lot of amazing reprints in this set, I will tell you that. It feels like a master set, but the prices are a lot more reasonable. I like that quite a bit. And if you're a commander player, even if you don't play the cards in limited and you never actually open a pack of this, there's a lot of great singles that will be coming into the market that maybe were a little too expensive before. You're going to find them a little bit cheaper to enhance your commander decks. For that reason alone, I'm very excited about this product. We'll be back tomorrow with another recap video looking at everything that's revealed over the next 24 hours. But until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.